Well, hello, you spooky buggers. Welcome to the October Closer and the return of Damn It Open. My name's Theo, clearly very spooky. I'm a fat skeleton today. This is about as spooky as I can do these days. Behold the ravages of age. So yes, hope we're all good out there. Hope you enjoyed it. Trucktober for however brief it was. We're calling that a partial success, I think. I had a list of seven toys that I wanted to review, seven truck formers, and I was gonna pick four and do them all in a row, but like I had so much else going on that I only ended up getting two done. But they were the best two, I think. VNR Optimus and uh, G2 Clench. They were the main ones I wanted to do, and they turned out all right. So we'll call it a soft win. And uh, the last one, the Halloween special, was gonna be hybrid style convoy black version, but it turns out it's just not interesting. And I got bored making it, and uh, I ended up not making it. So instead, let's do a damn it open. Why ever not? Just the one parcel today, but it is absolutely flipping enormous. This is my uh, PulseCon swag box. I haven't even told you about PulseCon yet. But before we dig in, I'm delighted to announce that I'm officially reopening the P.O. box. Yay! So if you got any fun stuff that you want to send my way, you want me to check out, you want to have featured on the show, then the door is open at Box 55, 1 Hanley Street, Nottingham NG15 BL, United Kingdom. Because I do actually have space to store things now. It's pretty nice. So let's fire this up again. Uh, big cheers as well to everybody who's checked out Rogue Limb so far. Really pleased with this album. Still available at uh, roguelim.bandcamp.com on CD and digital and all major streaming platforms. We've got some t-shirts too. If you fancy a bit of uh, autumnal hardcore, it's good fun. It's really angry and shouty and I'm really pleased with it. So thanks once again to everybody who's checked it out so far. Right on. And with that, let's bang this swag box open. Hell yeah. I'd love to show you the label. It's got my actual address on it, so I'm not gonna, but it's addressed to Matthew Few Adams, which is my full name. So yes, this box comes from the lovely folks at Actual Hasbro from the time that I visited actual Hasbro. <laughs> Last year I hosted the uh, pre-show for PulseCon, which was basically 45 minutes of twaddle before the actual show. And it was just me talking at a camera for literally three quarters of an hour. It was fun, but it was really stressful and it was loads of pressure. But I'm glad I did it and I'm grateful for the experience. But this year was loads better. Because what is the show? It's a toy reveal show. We talk about toys, show off some stuff, just get to that. Yeah, make it one afternoon rather than a weekend. Fallout Boy, don't worry about it. Flo Rida, you stay home. We'll just do the toy bit. And I think it was a much better show. I certainly found it a lot more enjoyable. I had a wonderful time. And I think we pulled it off, personally. God, it was ages ago now. It was like a month and a half ago or something, which is like five years on the internet. So yes, I flew out to uh, Massachusetts and went to actual Hasbro HQ, which was wonderful. Met the whole uh, Transformers design team. They're all legends. I love them. Dad Larson also is uh, incredible, lovely bloke. So tall, it's really weird. I still don't know if I've had like a real experience of America because I was working the whole time. I wasn't like out looking at the sights. I didn't get to see Boston or much of like Portucket or anything around there. I was in a hotel near a Target. I had Panera bread for breakfast, which is great, by the way. A lot of people talking smack on Panera bread. That stuff ain't bad. Just like factory tours and then studio and then straight to bed because I was knackered. So I still don't really feel like I've had the American experience. So it was like basically a week of work with preparation and then filming. The first day I was there, they took me to actual Hasbro HQ and showed me around. It was amazing. I uh, bumped into Mark Ma in the lobby area who is the loveliest bloke you'll ever meet in your life. Because I was looking forward to meeting the Transformers team because I've kind of been in touch with them a bit here and there. Because the current Transformers team for me are like the perfect representation of the fans doing the things that the fans want. I mean, I know there's a lot of back and forth about, oh, they could be doing better, but they're doing pretty good, man. And Mark just has such wonderful energy. He's so chill. He's a skater and a graffiti artist guy, so he has that sort of, yeah, dude, sort of energy. He's just like that. And he's so lovely. There's a, uh, like a transform, an electrical transformer outside Hasbro HQ, which is painted up like Optimus Prime, and Mark did that. Uh, that's wonderful, that's his vibe, love that guy. First person I met from the gang was uh, Emily, who was on the stream a lot doing all the sort of housekeeping stuff. Total powerhouse, this lady. Total dynamo. Real, like, a bundle of energy. She has that kind of um, supportive aura that makes you think, you know what, I could be working harder. And you do, and it just it makes everything come off better and she was incredible. On, on the stream as well, tireless. She bought me some sweeties, one of those things that you put on your tongue. What's it called, like a fruit wrap or something? And it's totally disgusting, but it was fun. They were bringing me into the American experience 
and I felt right at home immediately. Uh, BMAC, also total legend. He's like a about my age sort of New England ex metalcore guy. So like he's pals with all the guys from Kill Switch Engage and that. And I thought that was I was like, oh, brilliant, really. But to him, they're just some dorks that he knows. <laughs> so we had a bit of a chat about that and sort of bonded over sort of 2000s metalcore. Brilliant. But yeah, he showed us around his office, showed us all the stuff he's working on. He gets it, you know. He is like the best guy for me who could be at the forefront of. Transformers. His temperament, his attitude, his priorities are um, right in line with mine, so... <laughs> I like him because he reminds me of me. He wants the things I want, and we love to see it. What a legend. I want to hug him right now. Anyway, we'll continue in a bit, but let's get into some of this gear, because there is a ton of it. This is uh, Transformers Shattered Glass Decepticon Flame War. I got this from the uh, employee shop at the Hasbro plant. Yes. Oh, God, I love this packaging, man. The colors are so good. Such friggin' bisexual power on these. That's a nice motorcycle. All right, I'm going to pop this open. Can I tell you? the frustration I'm having with my current process. Because I have imposed so many rules on myself for no real reason. Like, I'm still kind of working through the TF Nation hall from August. Like, last night, I opened my uh, Legacy Animated Prowl. Yesterday. I'm, just, I'm so behind. I've got all this new stuff, and I'm just not enjoying any of it. Because I've decided that, oh, I'm not allowed to do it until I finish the current video. And then, oh, I've got to do in-package photos of all of them first. And then I never use them, so screw it. Straight in the bin, I don't care. Get out of there. Yeah, if there's one thing I've always been good at, it's driving myself nuts. So Flame War is coming out of here and we're gonna figure her out right now. I don't know, I find myself thinking, oh, I wish I could just get on with it, but then I put all these barriers up in between me and getting on with it, which is kind of why I'm doing a damn it open. I just need to make a video. Can I have some progress, please? Boom. This is Decepticon Flame War from Shattered Glass for some reason. I think they were just kind of reaching for reasons. The backpack, I think that just goes right on there. There, right? Yeah, there we are. So we have the backpack that's loaded up. I did check out this mold before. I got the uh, Road Rocket version, because I think this is the third or fourth one, isn't it? They did Flame War, uh, oh god, Road Rocket, RC, and that laser cycle guy. It is stunning that they did that laser cycle, but I think for me, this is probably gonna be the definitive one of this. Cause god, that's pretty. Look at her! Look at her! Ultimate axe-wielding bike berserker. Absolutely stunning. Look at those titty flames, that's dynamite. This girl is on fire! And she got the uh, axe, the old pterodactyl battlemaster creature. Yeah, it's wonderful. I think um, it would have been easy to make this into like a bow and arrow, wouldn't it? It probably doubles as one. Because I think, wasn't that Flame Wars, like, primary weapon was a bow and arrow? I don't know. But the point is, it's an axe that is a pterodactyl. Fire glide we're going with, are we? All right, give me a sec. I'm going to see if I can motorbike this lady up. As if... Studio Series Mohawk is happening. Legit never thought I'd see the day. It is nice to see some of those guys cropping up. And now they've also announced Rise of the Beast Wheeljack. I would love to see that redone as Dreadbot somehow, because he had the uh, BW camper van alt mode. And then, you, like, just the standard crowbar crankcase body type. Am I right? Yes, there. Right, so that slides back. These slide back and link up. Okay, this is a very unintuitive transformation. I do respect the complexity of it. It's not that complex, but it is confusing. I've never been able to do it naturally. I think I only transformed Road Rocket once. Kind of half a motorbike and then... Boop. Yeah, there we go. But God, what a trip it was to be able to introduce the actual Transformers panel. Like, I think I was the first non-employee to see uh, Magnius. Or one of the very first, at least. Dan and I. Dan's a fantastic man. Seriously, though, he really, like, put me at ease. He drove us back to the hotel after the um, factory visit. And we just had a little chat about, like, being on YouTube and what that's like. And how, like, his channel came to be what it is. He's just me, but more charming. That's all it is. He's He has the same sort of attitude as I do toward maintaining the channel. He's more efficient at it than I am, I think. <laughs> like, maintaining a presence on YouTube in a way that is both satisfying creatively and sort of practically in terms of what gets views and blah, 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 blah. But I'm really bad at that. <laughs> Dan and Greg have got it figured out. Everybody needs a Greg. I got my Greg right in riffs in Rogue Limb. Everybody needs a Greg and Dan's Greg is uh, his partner on the channel. The one who goes, ho, 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 cut, you know. But it was a real trip to meet him and he's totally lovely. Whoa! 
beautiful motorcycle. Yeah, yeah. That is very pretty, actually. Oh, this is a good one. There's been a lot of motorcycles in Legacy, and not all of them have been great. Like I said, I opened my Prowl yesterday. Not amazing. Totally vibeless. But this is very good. The Studio Series Junkions are excellent as well. The Big Voyager, Retgar, and all his pals, they're great. So it's nice to see some really lovely motorcycle action. Uh, yeah. There's motorcycles. So that was the only bot that I chose. Everything else was kind of BMAX shoveling stuff at me. Just take it! Get it out of here! I guess it would be prudent to uh, start with the PulseCon exclusive. Oh my, look at all this. Armada Universe Power Links Hotshot and Armada Universe Charles. That is so many words. Look at this, my two favorites here. Armada Universe Power Links Hotshot, Armada Universe Charles and Dirge. Right, let's bang this open, shall we? Don't care about the box. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that plastic free packaging. We do respect the plastic free packaging. And I kind of lament that, they, that they're going back to um, the plastic bubbles and everything. Because it's like, who cares? Throw it in the bin. Recycle. But like with this and like Nova Prime, you can see what it, it does sort of suck the pomp out, doesn't it? But again, I will ask you. Who cares? It's the temporary storage for the thing you keep, so why should it linger in the Pacific Ocean for 20 years after you're finished with it? Tissue paper may not be pretty, but it's biodegradable. Get a grip. Whoa! <laughs> Look at all this loot! We got little Minicon Jolt in like a vague salmon-y, orangey, red, pink sort of vibe. One, two, three, four, six blast effects. We got the wide sort of flower sunburst. You got the semi-narrow one and then the longy. The Tom DeLonghi. Hello there! And bang, and they go on a gun like so. Yeah! Brilliant! These have really grown on me, actually. <laughs> I think it was with um, Star Saber, wasn't it? I was talking about these. The, I, I didn't love them at first, but you notice it when they're missing. Boof! Oh dear, that's a little floppy. Gosh, there is violence in this skinny man. There we are. Got the little thingy that goes on his shoulder side thing, I think. This is uh, much skinnier than I thought. This is the first time I'm checking out Legacy Armada Hotshot. Kinda passed me by at retail. I wasn't super interested. Like, the uh, Commander Class Optimus is amazing, and Megatron is all right. This, for me, was not one I was super into checking out. Look at that Axel Zooka thing. That's so dumb, I love it. But we also have Minicons, brilliant. I split the Sideswipe and Black Rodimus set with a mate, because I wasn't that interested in Rodimus, but I wanted the Sideswipe. And for me, the uh, Minicon, was the best bit of the set. That's so cute. Very Gobot-y vibes on this. <laughs> that is a Transformer who is a helicopter. So pure and simple. Amazing, love that. Let's see if we can do the car. I'm gonna try and do this pure guessing. There it goes, we have a backpack. How is this foot gonna work? I reckon we swivel. Legacy is such a wild selection of stuff, isn't it? Like the other night I had a sit down with bots moment where I finally unwrapped some of the bots that I picked up at TF Nation. And it was all legacy stuff, and I found myself hanging out with Armada Megatron, Beast Wars second Leo Prime, who's great, by the way, and friggin' Detritus, E-Hobby Detritus. Have I missed something with the, yes, I have, right. The head tucks into the bod. There we go, now we're vibing. Oh dear. <laughs> Not totally impressed with this, gotta tell you. It's fallen a bit. The arms are very flimsy. Where do the arms go? They just, I think they just chill out at the sides. Ah, there we are. Unicron battles, I get to do the Minicon thing, yes! We go like that, and then it's like a wind-powered car. <laughs> that's so daft. Oh, that's kind of good, isn't it? It's a little bit floppy in robot mode, but that's a fun little set. Cool, red, hot roddy vibes. It's lovely to see a bit of Armada about here and there, isn't it? Because like, like Starscream was good, this is all right. Optimus was spectacular and Megatron's okay. We're doing okay for Armada. I'd love to see Cyclonus come back and um, demolish her. I'm not holding my breath, but I would love that. Superb, lovely stuff. But yes, from that, let's go directly to Dirge. G1 Universe, Decepticon, Seeker, Conehead, Dirge, Enforcement, Artillery, Mo it's just Dirge. One five letter noun and we're done. And also, I've already got one. Way! <laughs>
Would you like a go on Legacy Evolution Dirge? Here's what I prepared earlier. This is the um, Earthrise version, which I understand is identical. It's just a re-release. So let's just get this moving. Yeah, we got Dirge. So if you would like to potentially claim this boy, please do subscribe to the Few Adams channel. Thank you very much. Send me an email at fewgiveaways at gmail.com with the subject line Dirge, please. Dirge, please. Yes, Dirge, comma, please. And in the text, just put Dirge again. Please get that in by, oh God dates. The 12th. Why not Sunday the 12th before midnight GMT? Please only enter once and we're doing it worldwide. Oh, it's nice to be doing this again. <laughs> and I will pick a winner entirely at random. One dirge on its way, baby. God, there's so much in here. This is nuts. Right, if it's okay with you, I reckon we should get disgusting. Yeah. This is a G2 Toxitron Capsule Grimlock. I love this whole Toxitron thing. It's so directly what I like. Big daft neon colors and biohazard symbols and they've cranked up the contrast and the anime vibes. It's so good. Truly does appeal to your boy. Absolutely love this. Jesus, this is so good. Ridiculous neon tiger force Grimlock. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> Yeah, this is G2 Universe Grimlock, but it's not the, uh, just the straight blue repaint, is it? Based on, like, a cancelled redeco that never happened. They did a side swipe as well, and, like, a bunch of other, the orange jazz? Orange, you're glad they didn't release that one. Christ. God, these leader Dinobots have been so good. Now, I got Snarl the other day. He's not my favourite one, but he's still great. But Grimlock is absolutely stunning. And I gotta tell you, this big, stupid 90s colour scheme is doing things for me. Predictably, we all knew it would. Purple Incredible Hulk pants and metallic teal body block with the silver head. That is so good. God, that's disgusting. This is going to be one of those guys that I, I'm going to need to find another name for it. Because for me, this could be a different character. I had a similar thing with um, Armada Megatron last night. Like, that's a cool toy. Much as I love the variety of Megatron designs, it does get a little bit frustrating that they're all just Megatron. Can we, like, crowdsource? a new name for Bright Yellow Grimlock. Like a Toxo-inspired dino robot name. There's gotta be a good one out there. What do we think? Maybe drop one in the comments. If you have an idea for this, I wanna hear it. Because this toy would be more fun as a different character. Just for me, that's what I think. Toxo, Tyrannos, I don't know, there's something... There's potential there for... <laughs> I love it. Oh, it needs some toy hacks on there or something, didn't it? Very custardy plain tum on this big dino dafty. Key Lago, Montego. Hi. <laughs> I don't even think he would have the Greg Burger voice. Oh, big Greg is kind of struggling with the, uh, the Robosun, isn't it? It doesn't sound like him anymore. Me, Dino Mighty. That's not you. Probably time to recast for me. Get Keith David on it. You know what? He's chilling. He's a pina colada. Super colada. Why not? <laughs> That's terrible. I'm going with it though. Super Colada. Delicious. Mmm, pineapple refreshing. Mmm, ice cream so good. Yes, popcorn. Anyway. <laughs> G2 Leader Class Toxitron Grimlock. That is ridiculous and I'm honestly all about it. What a time to be a Transformers fan. We're getting Commander Class Magmatron. Next up then, a deluxe I was gonna skip. This is Beachcomber. I don't know if I'm interested in this one. We'll, we'll give it a crack. Because for me, the uh, deluxe mini bots have been very hit or miss. After I did the review of Cosmos, I didn't... Keep it. I moved it on because I preferred the Thrilling 30 um, Legends class guy. And this Beachcomber, honestly, it looks so similar to the Power of the Primes one. We'll see how we get on. I don't know how much cop this is going to be. I think he comes with a little bird, doesn't he? Oh, he sure does. <laughs> Oh, that is tiny. Oh, that's possibly the smallest named Transformers character I've ever seen. Smaller than any of the world's smallest guys. Is that black smudge supposed to be there? No, it was kind of stuck to the gun. But this is Paradise Parakeet, and he is the tiniest little green bored friend I've ever seen in my life. He's like squidgy. He goes on like a siege battle effect thing. 
Oh, that's fun. That could be uh, lots of potential there. I do like Beachcomber. He's such a sort of classical robot design, right? He's so basic and easy. Just a little dune buggy fella. Does he even need a gun? He always ends up with a gun. Like in the um, Universe 2.0 Legends class, Beachcomber, known pacifist Beachcomber, was the only one who got a gun. Here we go. This is Power of the Primes, was it? Or Titans Return? Legends class Beachcomber. The small fella over here. I suppose that'd be like core class now, right? But it's very similar. I don't know if it's different enough to really uh, do anything new for me. Oh, rubber tires. Interesting. Right, never mind the comparisons for a second. I'm just going to check out this lad and enjoy him on his own terms for a sec. Those tires, they're, they're, that's very rare to see rubber tires in 2023 on a deluxe toy. That's amazing. I'm going to see if I can figure this out apropos of nothing. Oh, speaking of cool guys, speaking of cool, chill guys... Um, Evan from the Transformers 2, I don't think I've bigged him up yet, he's great. First time uh, we bumped into him was in the pub after the uh, factory visit. He was just there playing Pokemon Go and I'm like, hey, are we gonna do this raid together or what? <laughs> Cause like, I'm one of the saddos who still plays that every day and so is Evan. So we're like Pokemon Go pals now, but he's so lovely. And he showed me like the CAD model for um, something that I'm not sure if I'm supposed to mention. <laughs> There's gotta be a step I'm missing here. There, there it goes. <laughs> I'm like, why is the waist not long enough? And where does the head go? You just, to that. God, that's so simple, actually. Little tuna can, little flat and wide guy. Oh, I don't know if I like that. I think it's very cute for a deluxe mini bot type guy. They're always quite simplistic, but pretty good. So I'm not mad about it, but I, I don't think that's quite for me. That clearly is supposed to plug into something. I don't know if that's just his gun goes on as a grill. I don't know if that's right. Doesn't look very good. Oh, no, yeah, that is it. <laughs> Where's the parakeet gone? Where have I put him? I've lost it. I've lost the parakeet! After 10 seconds, it's gone! He's so tiny! He's got no chance out there! Oh no, there it is. I got him. I got him! <laughs> That's so silly. Yeah, I don't know if I love the proportions on that. Very flat and wide and cartoony. I don't know if that quite appeals to me. But it's got a little roll cage, it's got seats, it's got that little corrugated flooring that I love seeing. Clench has got loads of that. Detail's alright, but the proportions are just a little too sunbow for me. But I do like the robot mode, I respect it, but I don't know if that quite checks all the boxes for me. Oh yeah, back on Ev. He gave me something that I was quite blown away by for a second. Uh, it's just a little card from some convention or other with Megatron and Optimus in their evergreen designs signed by both Peter Cullen and Frank Welker. How cool is that? I thought that was amazing. They just, um, he just handed me this and he goes, I wanted to make sure that you don't leave without this. I'm pretty sure it was Evan who gave me that. But it might also have been uh, Adam. It was a month ago and I've had loads on since and it was a pretty full on week. So I can't remember exactly who gave me that. But I was delighted to receive it. And then he goes, yeah, we've got stacks of them. And he shows... <laughs> Just opens a box and there's like 300 of these in there. Wish you hadn't shown me that. But it's still pretty cool, right? Hascon. Wasn't that like 2018 or something? This has just been lingering about for five years. And then uh, now I have it. Why not? Let me show you some of the other tat they gave me, actually. <laughs> these actually are perfect for Halloween because it's just me in lots of different costumes. They let me keep all my selfie series, guys. <laughs> ah, look at this guy. It's kind of me. Generic white guy with beard and glasses, which if that ain't me, I don't know what is. So yeah, they did a bunch of um, selfie series, guys, for both me and Dan to show off during the show. And we didn't really get chance to because it was moving along at some kind of clip and they didn't have a specific close-up camera for these. So there's me in Mandalorian armor, there's me in Tony Stark. Boo! Oh, oh have that. Ugh. Looks like I'm catching a glob of something, doesn't it? But like the quality is all right on these. The bodies are great because they're um, like Marvel Legends, Star Wars Black Series and adjacent. Here we go. G.I. Joe classified. There's uh, me if I were a Snake Eisman. If I were a ninja. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got like Spider-Man, Power Rangers. I'm in all kinds of costumes. Whoa, Halloween mode. But yeah, the heads, they actually approached me about like what what color beard I wanted. Cause they only have like a limited number of beard sculpts and colors. So I said, you know, take your best shot. I don't know, you're, you're the artist guys. 
just find the closest match. I kind of trusted them with it, but it was nice that they asked. Because, like, the app, you can't get the app in the UK to scan your face in, so I just sent them, like, a bunch of selfies. But what I didn't know... Da, 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 da. <laughs> Brilliant. What I didn't know, and what the G.I. Joe team did better than me, was the facial expression, because I didn't know you could do that. Because all these versions of me are just kind of standing there looking gormless. But I didn't know there was the option to, like, emote with it. So the G.I. Joe team have got all these, like, ah, brilliant, ah, action faces. And it's me just like, Cause I didn't know you could do that. But yeah, nine or ten little mini fuse in various Hasbro costumes. I like the Ghostbusters one the best, actually. I think that's the one that works the best, because, like, the Ghostbusters are just, like, fat schlubby dudes, and so am I. Like, I don't have a Power Ranger physique. I'm not Spider-Man, we all know this, but a Ghostbuster kind of works. I'll not show you the uh, Black Panther one, it doesn't hit right. Hey, a couple of bits and bobs from uh, Toy Galaxy Dan. He was nice enough to chuck me this G1 bombshell knockoff. Whoa, look at that. That's some crazy business. I haven't really figured out this just yet, but these plates are metal. This is all die cast and the colors are kind of wonderful. I love him with a bit of blue. Oops, the chest panel ain't having it. Let's call him, um, I've already used your mom shell, haven't I? On a barrage knockoff. Nice going, dickhead. And also the real one for comparisons. Why not? But yes, thank you, Dad. Thank you for driving me home and, uh, giving me toys and playing my sugar in the car. That was very nice of you. <laughs> I was like, oh, I found my people. Oh yeah, also the sprues from the PulseCon uh, production. I wasn't sure about these at first because they gave me a ton of like just the plastic ones and like it's very difficult to make that work like on camera because they don't look amazing, but then they did a bunch that were painted up. Like, this is supposed to be like Bumblebee, so they gave me the Transformers one, and like, that looks pretty cool, I think. I do like that. There was like a Star Wars one where this was a lightsaber, G.I. Joe one in camo. It was pretty cool, actually. They turned it out in the end. Speaking of G.I. Joe, actually, there was a wonderful moment in the canteen of the studio. Dan was talking to Lenny, the big guy from the G.I. Joe team. He's awesome, I love that guy. But um, I pointed out to Dan that he was talking about G.I. Joe, to the guy from the G.I. Joe team while wearing a G.I. Joe t-shirt and a G.I. Joe hoodie. <laughs> if that ain't the dream, I don't know what it is. Cheeky G1 Grimlock from Dan as well. Actually really appreciate that because I don't have any of the G1 Dinobots anymore. I'm kind of Dinobotted out after the Geiger Saws, the Geiger Power thing and the Studio Series. I feel like I've kind of had enough Dinobots for now, but it is still lovely to see G1 Grimlock again. Thank you, Dan. Love you, buddy. Couple more bits from Dan here. We have a uh, red Lamborghini lad, which I think is a GoBot. Is this one of the Puzzler crew? I've got Puzzler, I'll just check. No, it's not. It's simply a little transforming guy, which if this ain't a GoBot, I will eat my own face. This has such GoBot vibes. It has to be one. If it's not a GoBot, then it's a select converter or a knockoff. And uh, honestly, I love all three of those. So <laughs> we win. We stay winning. G1 Ramhorn, I, th I think that's genuine. Got a rub sign there. A dent. Try and figure it out. Because if it is genuine, then it's old and I'm scared of breaking it. I'm not going to sit here and snap that on camera. <laughs> Silly, rubbery G1 Megatron thing. Is that real? It looks like one of those decoys you used to get with like the G1 figures, like the throttle bots. But they weren't painted. So someone's painted that up and they've painted the head black which makes it early commercial Megatron, I think. <laughs> From like the very first animation. That's so nerdy, I hate it. <laughs> uh, another cassette there, pretty sure that's Steeljaw. Again, I don't want to try it, but it looks like that is Steeljaw. And if it is, then thanks, but I'm not dealing with that now. These look like Inferno's ears? What are those doing here? And a slot machine guy, this has got to be a select converter. I do have a couple of similar ones. Oh God, that ain't moving at all. It's not happening tonight, gang. I don't know how this works, but nothing's moving, so I'm not gonna risk it. But I am gonna say, thanks, Dan. Danks. All right, a bit more of that kind of loot in a bit after we dig back into the swag box. It's Studio Series Ratchet. Oh, how tasteless it is to have this. <laughs> Wonderful Ratchet figure from the one second he was in the movie before being shot to pieces. Ratchet and the Autobot crew fight to defend the shuttle against a Decepticon attack. 
No mention of how that worked out. Oh, the scene of the crime. Like, at least Ironhide got the, uh, such heroic nonsense moment. At least Brawn was first on his feet. At least Prowl got a memorable death. Ratchet, I mean, there were no winners in that scenario, but Ratchet definitely got the least ceremonious moment. Not as bad as Wheeljack showing up for one second already dead, but uh, I don't know how much more I can say about this toy. I've already done Siege, Ironhide, Earthrise, DK2 Guard. We've had a bit of a rant about Studio Ironhide and Ratchet really is just the same, but in white. That is a good looking toy. Is it in focus? I cannot tell. This light is very bright. I'm still not used to this setup, man. I've got a light over here. I've got a monitor with the, where the light readings are slightly off. Is he overexposed? I can't tell. I'm kind of guessing for a lot of this. There we go. Ratchet is gorgeous, a lovely handsome boy, and uh, we respect him. I've never really liked the uh, little medical starburst things here, because I'm sure there used to be a red cross, but I'm pretty sure the red cross has a monopoly on using a red cross. So they've turned it into like a red asterisk, and I'd, uh, I don't know. No medical gear though, no surgery tools or anything. I suppose it's studio series, and in the movie he did just have these two guns for a second. Didn't have a chance to do anything else, did he? But this does raise the question what to do with my Siege Ratchet. Because I do love Siege Ratchet, but you know, we've had so many variations of incremental progress. I'm so sick of talking about this. I don't even, can we call it like a Ratchet Gate or anything like that? Iron Gate, why not? <laughs> Sorry, that's the name of a street in Derby. That's just a joke for you. I just, I don't know how I feel about this anymore. I'm just kind of sick of thinking about it. Point is, there is Studio Series Ratchet. He is available if you would like one. Oh God, moving on, please. And on that bombshell, let's do the second giveaway of the night. <laughs> Halloween giveaway. These guys are corpses. Death! Wounds and screaming faces! So this is the uh, Buzzworthy Bumblebee Studio Series Death Moment 2 pack of um, Ironhide and Prowl, which is a bit f***ing insulting, honestly, because these toys were released initially as a two pack. I think it was Amazon exclusive and it was really hard to get. Yeah, no, this, it's the same Prowl, so it's a little bit offensive that they re-released that Prowl and the Ironhide with the correct alt mode deco. It's got the yellow stripe now. The normal one didn't, but the dead guy one has. I can't explain how much I hate this. I actually spoke to BMAC about this. I'm like, I can't believe you really did that. He goes, oh no. <laughs> I'm very annoyed by this. I hate it. I want it out of the house. Would you like it? So standard giveaway protocol. Please subscribe to my channel and send an email to fewgiveaways at gmail.com with the subject line, DEATH! And in the text, just write, ah! Get that in by whatever date I said before. 12th, was it? Yeah, November the 12th, please. Before midnight GMT. Only one entry, and we'll do uh, worldwide, because why not? Somebody's got to want this. I've got to go further afield than the UK. <laughs> Oh boy, and you know what? I think I'm gonna have to leave it there. That's a lot. That's a lot for one day. Why don't we pick this up at the weekend and we'll finish it off. So thank you so much for watching. Lovely to catch up. Please do get your entries in for uh, Dirge. Someone's doing fireworks. I can't film now. Please do get your entries in for Dirge and uh, the Pack of Death. And I'll be back in a few days with part two of this. And we'll kick off November in style, baby. In a bit now. <laughs> Oh, damn it, open returns. Who would have thought it? Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'll be back with another one very soon. All the patrons, thank you so much for supporting my silly little show. Hope I'm doing all right. Especially this time, the lovely Nick Calhoun. Thank you, my friend. Toodaloo, baby girl. Be sure to subscribe for more Thew's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.